welcome Dominic Sessa. And she plays Mary Land in the movie The Great Divine Joe Randall. just stew in this stuff and all of these things were, were coming out that 
I haven't thought about in years, and people I hadn't thought about in years, and, and situations, and teachers, and all of this was just, it was an endless flow of it for me. Mm. <laughs> Say why, and I want to bring you in next. I love Mary Lamb so much. She is an inside and out beautiful character. And you wrote her to life so, so touchingly, so beautifully. I'm wondering if you could talk about how you tapped into that headspace of deep love, but also deep grief, the, the ebb and flow of grief, the on and on, off again. We just see that in your performance, in your face, even in your silent moments. So tell us a little bit about tapping into that. Um, yeah, thank you. I, I think it was a real, I think it was Alexandra and I like constantly towing this line of what is appropriate when it comes to emotion. And, and this line of maybe that's too much, maybe do a little less. Um, and I find there's a sweet spot that then you as the actor are deeply connected to it and that you or the viewer are leaning into it. And that took some time, I think, to figure out. I, I think one thing that really helped it's interesting, I've never had an experience before where it's almost like I'm doing two movies in one, right? One of me doing the dialogue and, and all of that. And then there was this other interesting element that I've never done before, not to this level, of it was truly like being a silent movie actress mm -hmm. and having pages of a moment that David wrote so beautifully, it's almost as if the script then changed into like a novel or a narrative of describing the area and what's all around. And it took a lot of trust, to be honest, in Alexander to be like, okay, I'm gonna let you just capture me in this. Uh, and moments that I think of in particular that stand out are moments where I'm just, I don't know if it's all in here or not, but moments of me just being in my element of cooking. There was a lots of times where I was like preparing things or collecting like the recipes, you know what I mean? Or a big one for me was being in my room and I think it was like, we're gonna put together a puzzle and there's cigarettes, let's figure it out, you know? And just feeling comfortable in that space and so over time, the world kind of blended and the camera kind of disappeared. And I really then relied on Alexander's eyes to guide me. And I kind of just melted into the scenery, so to speak. And it, I used to always say a quick prayer because I was scared, I was nervous. Because it's very um, vulnerable that I was like, not only is the cameraman and everyone else in this room gonna see this, but whoever chooses to watch this movie is going to experience um, some depths of my pain that I've personally uh, experienced. But I think that's why we do what we do. Because I think it has to be something in which we're giving out so that you guys, the viewer may feel something, learn something, recognize something, and then hopefully that that then changes you when you guys leave out of here and you make a change off, you know what I mean, off into where you go. At least for me, that's a huge reason why I do what I do. So when I read the script and saw how much of the grief and this, this place that this lady was in, it was important to me that I showed layers of it and that it wasn't just, I'm depressed, son died. That it had more colors in there um, and I used the formula of like the stages of grief as like a, a guide or a marker, and then I just kind of tracked throughout where I wanted to show those different stages. But I wanted to show all those stages, uh, or as much of them as I possibly could, so that if someone were to watch this and was going through something, everyone at whatever stage could connect. It wasn't just, oh, well, she's stuck at anger and 
you know what I mean, denial, that it was something that everyone could hopefully connect to. I remember the very first conversation we had via Zoom, and uh, you remarked that you liked in the screenplay that there, as much as it's about these three people coming together, you appreciated seeing each of them alone. Yes. You saw it in the screenplay. Because we don't usually see that uh, in cinema, where someone, and not like a quick beat or like an ironic thing, but I felt like even in reading it, before we even got started, it was like, oh wow, the camera's really going. It almost made me think of like we're going through the halls, right? Imagine like almost being a ghost. I remember we talked about this, like being a ghost going through the halls of the academy, right? And that you kind of pass the door and that's like Mary's and you're like, Rrr! and you back up and you just. You emphasize that a lot, how we were alone there. You kept saying, yeah. don't forget the three of you are the only people here. Yeah. Kind of emphasizing that in a way that was really amazing. And, he, and I think it helped then show the massiveness of that building yeah. the and how it is a completely different thing once all these people are, are well, there. But, gone. Yeah, yeah, but when it's gone, it somehow is this neutral ground that I, I think and hope you guys feel this sense of no way would this ever happen unless everything else was gone. Right, if it wasn't the winter, if it wasn't the holidays, and all the stuff that the holidays give, but this sense of these three people are in this massive space on acres of land by themselves, um, and then this beautiful thing erupts. And Dominic, it's hard to believe that this is your first performance. Wow, like it's, it's incredible. <laughs> Two part question. Let us uh, talk a little bit about how you first got involved with the holdovers. I think there's a great story behind how you guys met. And what was your kind of entry point into Agnes Tawi's headspace, his anger, his vulnerability, and all the things that are in between? Yeah, well, starting out, uh, I'll try to keep this part short, but um, I was at my school senior year at Deerfield Academy. and. I got a call from our um, acting teacher there. Her name is Catriona Hines. She's a very lovely Scottish woman. And she uh, told me that these casting people were coming to look for some kids for a movie. And um, Susan Shopmaker, casting director, I guess, in that initial meeting, was saw something interesting about me for this character, Angus, um, and passed that on to Alexander. Uh, and then maybe a few weeks later, Alexander came to Deerfield to meet me, and I mean that was just surreal. Like he was standing in in my acting classroom where I had you know like yeah. hundreds of classes in there and the rehearsed for shows and stuff. And this guy's walking around, so that was kind of cool. Um, <laughs> and yeah, and we had that uh, that initial audition, and I don't know, I, like nobody was convinced at that point. I wasn't even really convinced myself that I could do it. I don't think yet. Um, so then it took, yeah, a couple more months of just hammering it out. And then kind of goes into like w w the second part of your question is I think just because for two months I was really uh, like kind of in a way obsessing over this kid, like just trying to figure out, you know, just be him, you know, in a way essentially live that in some sense because that was a big part of my auditioning and what Alexander was trying to get me to do is that, you know, stop, stop acting. And it's like, <laughs> that sounds super vague and, uh, you know, not specific, but in, in a lot of ways, I guess that resonated with me. And I don't know, I guess blunt and simple direction is kind of uh, more useful for me at least. And that, that helped me just kind of click and hit the ground running there. Did you feel that uh, the character you were playing was very different from you? Uh, mm, in some ways, yeah. I mean, obviously, like being back in you know 1970 is a different experience, but uh, I didn't feel like my like I had more friends than this kid. I think. <laughs> 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 like, yeah. Yes, right. You're like, popular. Yeah. yeah like, I mean, 